Hi everybody, it's only me. I thought I'd come on the night and do a bit of talking about some music, but I wasn't sure what I was going to do. And then I remembered that it was Monday, so I thought, Monday night, Motorhead. So um, I've already done the first pair of Motorhead, which was com pretty much covered the, the early days and the Fast Eddie Clark period of Motorhead. I'm going to pick it up here and take it for uh, Fast Eddie Clark, Leon all the way through to, uh, they went back to being a free piece in the mid 90s uh, we, when they, they went back to what Motorhead were doing in, in the early days so picking up for where we left off the last time um, Fast Eddie Clark had been either left or been kicked out of Motorhead depending on who you hear well he says he left, and they said that they never asked him to come back after that. He says he'd left another time and never come back. So they get in, as a replacement, they get in Brian Robertson, who had played the guitar with Thin Lizzy. Uh, for some reason, Brian Robertson thought he was some kind of special guest star in Motorhead, and he could do what he wanted and just end up rubbing him up the wrong way. Um, which would be the last significant thing that Brian Robertson did, actually. But anyhow, he made this this album with him, the one Motorhead album uh, Brian Robertson made me like this album got derided for years and years and years until the folk kinda came around to it and realised that it's actually really good. I've I've always actually enjoyed this album. Um Another Perfect Day it's called. It's actually not that much different for for an air Motorhead album, kinda rhythm section uh Lemmy and Phil Taylor is still exactly the same as what it was. All it was, you've got a different guitar player and heavily overdubbed guitar playing on this. Again, that's the difference between Brian Robertson and Fast Eddie Clark. Um, Fast, e Fast Eddie Clark, again, he, he's no Steve Vai, but he, he's a real gift for writing guitar solos that were, Ken Aldo, they were amazingly easy and easy to play they, they were like bits of the song you can't imagine the songs without they get they particular guitar solos in them kind of eddie clark never gets enough can everybody i was thinks it, it's it's the mace notes you can play it's no the mace notes you can play it's it's the it's the right fun and the right notes to play and eddie clark was amazing at that can brian robertson pretty good at that as well um maybe no as much with motorhead but can there's some bloody good songs on this can 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 you kinda of make it out because of the the font there? But can you're talking about songs like Back at the Funny Farm, Shine, Dancing on You Well I'm just running down the track listening again. Oi, this is good. Can I can I can't no recommend this album. I would say if you're gonna buy buy it the day in twenty twenty then I would get this as a, a deluxe edition double CD with a gig there, I think it's in Manchester but it's like a live CD, a concert there's a funny thing about Brian Robertson was he refused to play any of Motorhead's like really big hits he wouldn't play Ace of Spades or Overkill or Bomber or anything he, he, he would play The Chase is Better Than The Catch I know that kind of stuff. He's a really strange guy. But he ended up in Motorhead just for the one album because uh, one, he, by all accounts, sounds like he was acting like a pure pain in the arse for some reason. I don't know what that, why that could have been. And two, he had nay, uh, what's the word now? He had nay, like, respect for, for what Motorhead were and what their fans wanted him to be. He would go on stage with like kind of ballet pumps and shorts on and stuff, short hair, can probably had aftershave on as well, and ended up that folk weren't really interested in Brian Robertson being in Motorhead, and I don't think he was really that bored about being in Motorhead either, so he ended up getting kicked out, and in order to replace him, they put out for a new guitar player, and they did additions, and, and they end up with two guys. Uh, one was Wazzle, real name Michael Burston, 
who was a bit of a, a nutter for the West Country in England, and there was a a Welsh guy called Phil Campbell who'd been in a band called Persian Risk, and you wave a British metal band called Persian Risk, and Lemmy couldn't couldn't decide between the two of them. So he, he just decided to make a two guitar lineup, Motorhead. That was the the first Motorhead I ever seen. Um, performing on the Young Ones, nineteen eighty four, playing Ace of Spades with Phil Taylor on the drums. It was the only appearance they made with that that four piece lineup at that time. Uh, brought out this album called No Remorse, Greatest Hits album. The last album on the the bronze label. Uh, bronze label. Run by Jerry Braun, who had uh, who had a record label, famous bands on it like Uriah Heep, and that kind of signed Motorhead. Um, that was who Motorhead been with since the Overkill album. Other big hit records have been on there, so they brought out this greatest hits album called No Remorse, with four new tracks on it. Uh, it was a double LP. Some of them come with a little leather sleeve, but they had the. Uh, at the end, uh, the four sides all had a new studio track. They killed by death, which was a big hit. Uh, Snaggletooth. Uh, wait now, Steal Your Face and Locomotive. There's another couple on the, the bonus tracks of this one. Uh, Under the Knife, uh, which isn't really the bass versions. Under the Knife aren't they actually that memorable. So it's the same, same title for two different songs. Quite strange. But the, the No Remorse album, a uh, great place to start if you're into, if you've no idea what Motorhead's all about, can I can't see why you wouldn't, can you wouldn't be watching this if you had no idea what Motorhead was all about, can but if you wanted to get somebody to hear, get some of that Motorhead in you, that's place place there, can. I mean, look at the track listen, it's, it's just what a wall classic Motorhead, I'd get rid of that girl school song, Please Don't Touch, because I still hate it. But anyway, that's uh, Phil Taylor got left not that long after that. Be replaced by a guy called Pete Gill, who played with Saxon on the early Saxon albums, like uh, Wheels of Steel, Strong Arm of the Law, Denim and Leather. So I mean, uh, playing on the A3 albums, they had a pretty good CV coming into the barn. And they went on tour for a couple of years and never record deal. And then they eventually get a record deal with, uh, I think they set up their own record company called GWR which was stood for Great Western Records I believe but their, man, their new manager Doug Smith uh, Orgasmatron right good album yeah, the cracking album cover you yeah, a train the train there coming out, out the night with a motorhead war pig on the front <clears throat> the album t the the Orgasmatron title never came later. The the album was meant to be called Riding with the Driver, which is another good song on this album. But there you go, there's a uh, Phil Campbell, Lemmy, Pete Gill and Wuzzle at the end there. Ken totally different motorhead lineup for it had been what four years ago. But I, I really love Orgasmatron and some folk don't like the the sound of it. Produced by Guy Bidmead, he had went and he'd done something different to it. It's got a kind of futuristic soon. Orgasmatron has great songs in Death Forever. Um, mean Machine, Dr. Rock. Again, pff, Orgasmatron, the title track. This this version here as well has got a, a bonus disc. We are live live show for the Kerrang! Whoa! Weekender, which was done around about the same time. These these Motorhead Deluxe Editions are actually pretty good. You, if, you, if you buy them all, you end up with pretty much a... A, sh uh, a show for like every tour they did during the 80s. Also at this time they did the 1980, this was 1986, but no long before that they did in 1985 a concert at the Hammersmith Odeon, which came out as a video and a CD called The Birthday Party. If you can find that track, it doing that pretty good. I've got it in cassette, but it's up in the loft. I wasn't going to get it for, the, for this. Uh, next up, uh, Peter Gill had been left or got fired and... Phil Taylor came back. He wasn't the same Phil Taylor that had left. He just wasn't. He, he just didn't have the same. Um, Phil Taylor done this album nineteen eighty eight called Rock and Roll. I used a soft spot for rock and roll. This was when about when I first seen Motorhead 
at the, the Barlands uh, rock and roll album. The, the, the songs are all good, but it, it, it sounds terrible. Uh, Ken, really weak. Drum sounds pretty crap, and because because of the two guitar lineup, Lemmy's bass just isn't the the presence that it used to be either. Ken, he's been kind of pushed into the background a wee bit. It still sounds like Motorhead, but it's just not as good as it, it could have been. But it can really great Motorhead songs. Eat the Rich, uh, Traitor, Stone Deaf, and the UFCs. The riffs nearly the same as No Class actually. Dogs. Cutlery ones at the end they're all for you and Boogeyman maybe knows as good a song but uh, this one the, the couple of songs there on the there was a I think they were on the the, the Rich 12 inch they're on the bonus disc of this I don't know why they weren't the only album it's Cradle to the Grave which appeared in Pamela Fierce's Decline of the Western Civilization Part 2 the Metal Years that, that was a really good song and just cause you got the power, that don't mean you got the right, which has been kind They would play these, that song live for years just cause you got the power, but for some reason it never made the album, and it far better than Ken, three or four of these songs that did make it one there. The, this deluxe band's got the uh, show for Castle Donington 1986, which isn't strictly sticking with the... The remit here, it's not for the rock and roll tour, but it's quite nice to have that. Um, speaking of the, the rock and roll tour, they recorded this. Called No Sleep At All, and a, a tip of the hat to the No Sleep Till Hammersmith album. The, how does it compare to No Sleep Till Hammersmith? It's pretty good, but it's no... Can No Sleep Till Hammersmith... You've, you've got to have that in amongst the discussion of... Some of the best live albums of all time. Uh, no Sleep at All doesn't quite make it up that high. It's still a pretty good entertaining album. I, I do believe it was recorded all at the one gig at a festival in Finland, if memory serves. Uh, a couple of songs missing. I think there's a version of this that you get where you can get uh, Metropolis and Stay Clean in it, although they appeared at the end of the album, but no in the run sequence of the gig. But it's kind of like a couple of the the best, uh, the old Motorhead, can you overkill Ace of Spades. The rest of it's all stuff that they'd done since then. We bugger all for the, the Brian Robertson era, which at the time had been kind of buried. But uh, it's no bad, but it's no, no essential that. But I remember, but Ken, I it was one of the first Motorhead albums I got when it came out. It was no sleep at all. So a wee bit of a soft spot for it. Uh, next up after Rock and Roll... Motorhead signed with Columbia Records and kind of moved their base operations to America and come out with this album called 1916. Uh, see, a lot of folk really, really love the 1916 album. And I just don't understand how Ken Folk will say, oh, I, that's where Motorhead came back, and that's the best album since Ace of Spades. It didn't really do anything for me, 1916. Ken, there, there, there is some good stuff on it, Ken. The one to sing the blues is like, too much, yeah, no voices in the sky, they like that. But it was, it was too much of a mishmash for me. Once you get into uh, the Arse End, middle of the album, Arse End of the album, Nightmare, The Dream Times, the kind of weird, kind of hawk windy song. Love Me Forever's a weird ballad he hang. Angel City's like a kind of American, can I try, try to be a kind of American style rock and roll. <laughs> and then, um, Make My Day, no, Ken, Shut shut, shut You Down, they had a short song called Shut Ya Down on Iron Fist. On this album we've got a song called Shut You Down. Yeah, it makes you wonder how folk can say it song at the end there called 1916. Uh, the actual album is nee, nee, it's just another motorhead album to me. Ken, some folk think it's one of their best, but Ken, I'm not really that bored about it. Uh, this was the last album with Phil Taylor on it, who was having his, his personal demons. Uh, I think some of the magic had left the, the motorhead thing for him as well. And he'd be away out the door. I did see his, his last tour that he did at the Barlands in 1960. I think it was almighty supporting. 
pretty good. Although they didn't do the overkill, which apparently Lemmy says Phil Taylor couldn't play every night anymore, which is a shame because his legs had gone. Uh, next up, March or Die, which has been derided as one of the one of the worst Motorhead albums. Although Ken, I don't know, I'd put this one the same as nineteen sixteen. Now, there's, there's some songs on this that I actually like better than some of the ones on 1916. I, I like uh, Stand, that's a nice wee song at the start. The production's pretty crap. But um, Hellraiser's pretty good as well. It, Ozzy Osbourne came out with his version first, but I do like the, the Motorhead version better. Um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's Tommy Aldridge played the drums on this. I think maybe Phil Taylor maybe played the, the drums on. Ain't no nice guy, if I remember right. But this is just before Mickey D came in. March or Die is not that much different for the kind of 1960, I think, maybe a bit more kind of psychedelic and weird. But a lot of these songs are quite uh, forgettable. Cat Scratch Fever, a cover of the, the Ted Nugent number. But the rest of it, pff, uh, oh, Mickey D's actually made the album cover in the back there. But it was Tommy Aldridge, uh, White Snake, Ozzy Osbourne theme that played the drums, wasn't that? So, and there's nothing wrong with the drumming. It's just uh, everything else is a bit kind of tired out. And still uh, gone for the American thing. Uh, they, they got kind of dumped by CBS because that, that came out in 1992. They hear the grunge explosion, LA riots, that kind of stuff. So they signed with a German label. Called, um, what were they called again? Was it XYZ Records or something? And brought out this album called Bastards. And it can easy to track down now when you've got Amazon and, and all these kind of things can kind of online. At the time, you couldn't find this anywhere. I mean, you really couldn't find this anywhere. And back in the day when MTV used to play music videos rather than looking at pop stars' hooses all the time and cars. They would play the video for Burner, which was, uh, Ken, I think that was one of the only songs we heard at the time, was Burner, and it was like, where can we get this record? And we couldn't, could not get it anywhere, Ken, it was a couple of years before I tracked this down. But Bastards is, I'd, I'd put it in maybe, pff, oh, it's, it's hard to, it, it's up in the top. Uh, the the near the top of the motorhead. I certainly uh, the ones before Eddie Clark. It's one of their their best albums. Um, we one clunker on it, which I'm going to talk about now. But when you're talking about on your feet, on your knees, burner, I am the sword, born to raise hell, liar, devils, we bring the kin. Oh, that's a really good strong record. The only thing about it. Is brings the hail bloody hang crashing down which they've got in the middle there is a song called Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me what is Don't Let Daddy Kiss Me about it's about it's a, it's about a child molestation which is a no what I want to listen to a motorhead record for you know, when, I'm, when I put music on I want to escape for, for the world I want to escape for, for things that I don't want to think about and uh, Ken, I'm pretty sure Lemmy's heart was in the right place even though his brain wasn't he but I don't want somebody lecturing me on uh, that kind of thing Ken, no saying it, it shouldn't be shouldn't be dealt with but it's f no for me that shit but I mean um, Bastards yeah, damn good album well worth tracking down um, last one I'm going to talk about here is this album called Sacrifice follow up for, for Bastards another good strong Motorhead album after what I thought was a kind of wee dip with the 1916 and uh, March or Die albums this and Bastards really really strong good album covers as well with the, the war pig there looking as if it's gonna explode this is the last album with Wurzel on it was He's, he's not even made the back cover there. I think there's some versions of the album have got him in the back cover. I don't think he plays on all the albums. But this one very much... Uh, the, the title track, Sacrifice, is a, a, a big meaning for 
Mickey D to shine, kind of quite drum based, but had a strong record, Ken Out of the Sun, eh, Don't Waste Your Life, Sex and Death, I mean, all the, all the good songs on this day, and unfortunately, Wurzel just lost interest being in Motorhead, Ken, which is quite weird because I remember thinking, what, Wurzel left Motorhead? I thought it was Phil Campbell that left Motorhead, but it wasn't, it was Wurzel. So he was away, he never done anything else, unfortunately passed away probably about 10 years ago, Wurzel. And that would leave you with the three-piece lineup after this, uh, Lemmy, Mickey D and Phil Campbell doing the same kind of thing as uh, the three-piece way. Lemmy, uh, Phil Taylor and Fast Eddie Clark, Ken. It's... And this bond would go on for another twenty year. Ken, and could he even compete with the the Clark and Taylor Lemmy lineup? Is it the definitive Motorhead lineup? And Ken, no, for me either no, because the classic records were made by the Clark and Phil Taylor. But Ken, they've always put the years in, and they they loved being in Motorhead. They one made I was just going to mention a photo go. Uh, this one came out as well, it's BBC Live and In Session, I don't think I talked about it last time, maybe I did, I can't remember, it was a while ago since I'd done a Motorhead video. But the second disc there's, um, it's got a, a radio session there, for the run about the Orgasmatron time. We killed by Death, Orgasmatron, Dr. Rock, Death Forever, and a spoken word version of the Orgasmatron, by Lemmy. All well, the rest of it's all kind of, Phil, Phil Taylor and Eddie Clark stuff. Uh, hey, thanks, Derek. That's off an ICT, you see. I get your motorhead out. It's, it's Monday night. It's, it's time for that. But um, that, that, that'll do it for this one. Uh, I have to be quick round up before I go. Uh, another perfect day. Definitely. It's classic motorhead. That's no remorse. Good place for MD that's never heard it. Orgasmatron. Yes, definitely. Can I all these get? Can this gets derided as a, a dark time for Motorhead, but can it was never that bad. Rock and roll, I like rock and roll. Maybe kind of weak sounding production on it, but can I like the songs on it? Uh, that one's a maybe. Uh, no sleep at all. Any Motorhead albums, good. It, it's no no sleep till Hammersmith, but can worth a punt. 1916, overrated, overrated for me, so uh, I'd give that a, a miss. March or Die, no overrated, but just no quite as good as it could have been. It is a bald war pig, really. Right? No helmet on. I'd give that one a miss. Bastards, yes, although skip that, don't let daddy kiss me song. And um, Sacrifice. Aye, very, very, very good, good Motorhead album. So anyway, I'm a bug and bugger off doing a stair, and I, I might actually put some Motorhead on, because I'm in mood for it now. And uh, these times, we need something to keep us going, and uh, Motorhead's I was going to be there for you. So I'll away, and uh, enjoy the rest of the night, and I'll, I'll probably be back on later in the week, to come on talk me rubbish. Right, I'll see you later, thanks for watching, ta-ta.